This is breaking news. Good afternoon. We interrupt programming with uh, breaking news, the air quality alert impacting the tri-state area. This is a time lapse of the New York City skyline today, seeing improved conditions. Saw some blue up there. We're not in the clear, literally and figuratively, just yet. Good afternoon. I'm Dana Tyler. For a second day, people are being urged to take precautions, staying indoors if possible, and if you're outside, wear a mask. Uh, this is what's causing our poor or air condition uh, air conditions more than 500 miles away more than 200 wildfires in Canada have burned more than 9 million acres there about 170 of those fires still have not been contained now here's a look outside here in the city and you can see the haze is still lingering even though it's nothing close to the orange skies we saw yesterday at around this time. So uh, let's get right over to John Elliott with our red alert forecast and the weather conditions today. John, a little better. They are a little better, and we are taking any blessing we can find, Dana. And thank you for putting it into perspective. When you think of the mass of all of that smoke in the air and our weather pattern that is locked in, it's a big omega block. That's why the winds have been so conducive to this kind of mess in the atmosphere. Right now, 172, that is still unhealthy. That is why we still have an air quality alert for our area. We are hoping for improving wind conditions, and that will definitely help, but we are not alone. Some of the worst, central southern parts of New Jersey, down through Maryland as well. Now, again, when we look at the numbers right now, unhealthy to very unhealthy, that's where we've been hovering. Yesterday, that orange skies, that was like 488. That is an improvement. Yesterday, the peak in the city, worst air quality in the country, probably don't need to tell you, you saw it, was 484. See how things are continuing to improve? This is, again, some computer guidance on where we think the worst of the smoke is going to be. We're going to time stamp this for you real quickly. Still going to be problematic this afternoon, but watch what happens by tonight. Parts of the Hudson Valley, more of Connecticut, upstate New York, definitely New England. You're going to get a break. Following this line overnight into the first part of your Friday, things will improve. There's a little uptick later, but that's still an improvement over that color. You have to remember, it's a different kind of color that we're working with here. Now, this is Friday into Friday night. This could be great as we continue to see the wind change, and that's really the ally we're counting on, a change in the wind. Then we see improving conditions into the first part of your weekend. Some rain in the mix will also help, Dana, but we need to get the wind shifting, and that is underway right now. It'll continue, and we should see continue improving conditions over the next 36 hours. All right, John, we'll get back with you in uh, just a few minutes. Stay there. Thank you for the update. New York Governor Kathy Hochul, she gave an update on the air quality alert. She's reminding New Yorkers to stay safe, even though these conditions are improving. The message is this is not over. You know, it's, we might get a little respite, but I don't want people to let down their guard and to become complacent about this because we have to be prepared for the winds to shift. This is the unknown. We're tracking the large plume that is originating from primarily Nova Scotia, eastern, you know, and also Quebec, but also, you know, knowing that this is going to continue to have a negative impact on our health. I don't think there's a single person who hasn't felt something, something different, you know, more frequent coughing and just a tightness in the throat and watering of the eyes. And those are for people who are healthy, for those who have health conditions underlying already. It's, it's a real challenge for them. Governor Hochul says the air quality index still above normal, as John told us. In New Jersey, Governor Murphy also gave an update on the air quality in uh, the Garden State. Given the forecast for today, we continue to urge strongly all sensitive individuals, especially meaning those with health conditions like asthma, heart disease, lung disease, as well as our kids, pregnant uh, individuals and seniors, all of the above, especially to stay inside. Everyone should try and limit their time outdoors today and avoid strenuous activities. 
Governor Murphy says residents should continue, as you heard, to take those precautions, at least through tonight, and especially children, senior citizens, those with asthma and respiratory issues, as well as pregnant women. This has been a special CBS2 report. I'm Dana Tyler. Our coverage continues right now, streaming on CBS News New York. We'll be answering questions you sent to us through our social media platforms. And of course, any updates, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com. See you back here for CBS. CBS 2 News at 5 and 6. Thank you for staying with us, streaming on CBS News New York. I'm Dana Tyler. As the smoke and haze continue to linger in the tri-state area, people have a lot of questions from health concerns to environmental concerns. We've pulled some questions from our social media pages. We're going to get the right answers now for you. Our first question is from Mandy on TikTok asking, what about schools? I just picked up my daughter and the walk nearly took me out. So a lot of parents sharing this concern. Earlier today, the New York City Department of Education announced that all students and staff will move to remote learning tomorrow, Friday, June 9th. The next question is from Instagram, asking, has New York sent help to stop the fires? What is New York waiting on? We do have the answer to that one for you. Governor Hochul announced today that the state will send some firefighters to Canada. Uh, let's listen to what she had to say in this morning's press conference. So we're sending our first firefighters. Uh, we're having we're joining a, 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 a member of uh, individuals from New Hampshire and Maine as well. They'll be departing from the Saratoga uh, Fire Department on Friday and traveling to Quebec. They've asked for seven people over the next two weeks. This is how we can deal with this. You know, helping Canada get to these really remote areas. This is what the Council General told me. He says these are such remote areas; they're almost impossible to access. But containment's important to us. We want to get these under control. So I'm really proud that we're going to have uh, New York citizens up there trying to battle these fires to help Canada, but also the the collateral damage, which is the state of New York has been really hard hit by inferior air quality, unsatisfactory air quality. For our next question, let's bring back in meteorologist John Elliott. And John, Jason on TikTok com comments the rain needs to hurry so when are we going to get some rain and will it make a difference you know and dana in a bigger sense the pattern needs to change that's what we need to change because we've been stuck in a rut we've had this big omega block where it goes all that upper level air goes way up into canada and then it picks up the smoke and brings it our way now what we'd like to see is obviously for our own water resources some local rain. Bulk of the rain right now is to the north. You know, in a kind of an ironic, bitterly ironic sense, sometimes smoke will stabilize the atmosphere and that does limit convection. But we are gonna see a few chances for rain. Today, tomorrow, a better chance late. That will help. This reflects a shift in the pattern. Saturday's looking okay for weekend plans in so many ways because the air should be better. And then another chance at night, Sunday, and then it's a little unsettled next week. So that will help. But the big story is we've got to change the pattern. As far as timing out any individual storms, this would be this afternoon into tonight, isolated storm. Can't rule out uh, some gusty winds right around the storms. Now, Friday morning, again, we're anticipating the numbers to improve as far as the air quality index. That will help. It'll return, it'll bump up a bit in the afternoon, but by Friday night, for your plans, again, we all want to get out. We should see better air quality, but there'll be a few more showers and thunderstorms in the mix, hoping for relief for everybody that suffers from any kind of respiratory distress. Saturday should be vastly superior for you, the kids, mom and dad too. And then Sunday, it looks quiet in the day, but we could see a shower Sunday night into Monday. All right, John, and we see understanding the uh, AQI, the uh, air quality index there next to you. Could you just go over that one more time about where we are? So, you know, you know, when we issue these air quality alerts, you're usually in the unhealthy. and There's unhealthy levels of air. So that number is 101 to 150. So that's, that, that's bad. That's stressful. The numbers we have been dealing with, close to 500. Serious situation. Mm. Headaches. I mean, uh, any kind of... Uh, Pre-existing condition is, is, is just exacerbated by that. Very unhealthy. 
but we are seeing things are getting better. Things are getting better. We've skipped from, we're up three colors now. It's still code red, but we could be back to yellow and green by the beginning of the weekend. Sean, thank you. Uh, we'll be back in a, a minute here. Our next question from our uh, social media platforms this is about what's going on this weekend. As John mentioned, people want to get out. A TikTok user asking, will they cancel the Gov Ball? She's referring to the Governor's Ball, which is a multi day outdoor music festival, very popular. It's scheduled to start tomorrow at Flushing Meadows Corona Park. So, Here's what festival organizers say. They released this statement. We're closely monitoring the air quality with weather experts uh, and are in close contact with city officials. As always, the health and safety of New Yorkers is our top priority. At this time, the festival is continuing as planned. We are hopeful that conditions will improve in the coming days and are looking forward to a great weekend. All right, so busy weekend uh, and lots of events indoors and outdoors. Mayor Adams earlier today says the city will take it day by day when it comes to canceling what's planned. You know, we're going to practice what we preach. As Dr. Fasan said, our directions have not changed. And there's a reason the term game time decision is introduced into sports. Some of this stuff is just so unpredictable. You know, Mother Nature is going to do what Mother Nature uh, uh, desires to do. And so those who are hosting these events, we're going to give our recommendations. We haven't reached to the point of mandating, but it is going to come up, come down to the organizers. The doctor was clear on what our recommendations are. We don't know what's going to happen over the weekend. I'm looking forward if the weather permits to march into the parade. But it's, this, is, this stuff is a, is, is a game time decision based on what both the doctor and the commissioner is going to continue to advise people on. So, as everyone is saying, we've seen the air quality change throughout the day. At this TikTok question asking, how do conditions improve at night and get worse in the day? Do wildfires work a nine to five? We asked New Jersey State climatologist Dr. David Robinson this question. He said, quote, it might get worse somewhat during the day and with vehicles and factories in operation. However, a lot has to do with the timing of the smoke plume as it travels. Dr. Robinson says most of the timing is just a coincidence. Let's get back to John Elliott now and a lot of people talking about uh, the orange, the orange light in the sky. We got this question from a TikTok user saying, you know, very simply, orange light in the sky. Uh, John, what about that? Uh, not gray, not dark. Um, the smoke, as we know, usually is dark or gray. What's the deal with the orange? So I would like to try to connect some dots here. Thanks. This is a rather difficult concept to understand. When you think of a rainbow, a rainbow is the light of the sun going through suspended moisture and it splits it into the colors of the rainbow. Anything that's suspended in the air can change the wavelength. So sometimes if you have smoke, certain particulate matters, it's going to give you either a red sky, red at night, sailors delight for an approaching storm, or red in the morning, sailors take warning. You know, some of these old um, uh, folk sayings work. When you have suspended particulates like smoke or other kind of pollutants, it will actually change the wavelength of the sun. So it's a filter in the sky that will bring in these colors. Again, uh, it gets to be a little obtuse but because when we say green, it doesn't mean the sky is going to be green. But you get down to here and you do see a little bit of correlation. This, this color code is designed to grab your attention so you know this is bad. But it is rather apt when you get here because when you have pollution in the atmosphere, it's changing the wavelength of the light that's getting through that's up there changes the color in your eye. And it, I got to tell you, Dana, it was wild, mm -hmm. it was scary, it mm -hmm. was eerie, and I understand why people are stressed. I would just like to stress, you do what's best for you. That's right. You're the, if you had the bad throat and the headache yesterday, knock it off today, just stay inside, but you are going to be feeling better uh, Friday and Saturday. John, when you spoke about patterns, when we were just yes. speaking more uh, wide, uh, big picture geographically, and I remember Governor Hochul saying the Adirondacks 
you know, up the top of the state are doing pretty well. Um, and I, I think I've just imagined maybe other people, all right, if there's this smoke from Quebec, it's just whoosh, one big mass. Oh, no, but there no, are holes in it, right? I mean, no, no, no. I think I think that's great. And and again, I'm trying to. We have, I'm going to paint a mental picture. Yes. Yes. Uh, over the weekend, it was chilly in New York, right? Remember how cool it was Sunday morning? Right. And in the afternoon, it was 10 to 15 degrees warmer in Bismarck, North Dakota, than it was for the Jersey Shore. That's a big wave in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now it's a relatively narrow ribbon that's going to direct and steer and kind of give you the outline of that weather. We're in that kind of narrow ribbon. That's why, I mean, it's like the worst kind of irony. It's focused right on our area. And in fact, you're going to see, you put the future cast to work. What we're seeing is we're seeing it kind of recede to the south. And that's why already Sullivan Ulster Duchess has better air quality, points to the north, look much better, and into New England as well. John Elliott, thank you. You've really helped me understand it, and I'm sure our viewers, too. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody who asked us a question on social media. If you have something you'd like to know, please visit one of our pages. Leave a comment. You can find us on Instagram at CBS New York and on TikTok at we are CBS New York. We'll have continuing coverage of the air quality alert on CBS 2 News tonight, starting at 5. I will see you at 6. I'm Dana Tyler. Thanks for joining us. Have a good afternoon.